Hello friends, in this video we will be discussing about protein folding. The protein folding is one of the important biological processes that makes the protein functional. If the protein folding does not occur, the protein is rendered non-functional and sometimes it causes lethal diseases like in case when the protein becomes prions which I have already discussed what prions are. The link slides in. You can go there and watch that video also. Now coming back to the protein folding mechanism. First of all, we see in protein folding process the nascent protein is transformed into a final form what we call as native protein. We see the nascent protein is non-functional in nature while as the native protein is functional always. The other thing we see is that Nascent protein is arranged in a linear fashion and is one dimensional, while as the native protein is non linear and is three dimensional in nature. The three dimensional structure, the tertiary structure, defines the function of the protein. And it must be noted that the protein folding is either co translational process or it occurs after the translation. Now let's try to understand the concept of where from the protein comes and where the folding mechanism kicks in. We know all information is stored in a molecule called DNA molecule on the genes present on it. Then from this molecule the mRNA that's messenger RNA is synthesized by the process called transcription. So we have now mRNA molecule. So after that the information for a protein to be created is now with mRNA molecule and this mRNA associates itself with ribosome and this assembly drives the formation of a polypeptide chain or simply a protein. This polypeptide chain has got N-terminus end on one side and carboxyl end on another side. The carboxyl end is the C-terminus and on N-terminus we see it's the amino end. So either the folding process kicks in during the translational process called co-translational folding when a protein is created from mRNA it's created from N-terminus to C-terminus end and in co-translational folding the N-terminus side of polypeptide chain is folded while the C-terminus is still getting synthesized so this is how the co-translational folding works in but most of the cases are that the folding occurs after translation in the mechanism of protein folding the folding goes through three or four stage structural process. While the first structure of protein is primary structure, that is the nascent protein, a linear one. Then folding occurs in primary structures and gives us the secondary structure like alpha helices and beta sheets, which we are going to discuss later on what these are. And we see this secondary structure is three dimensional in nature, but it's non-functional. Then from secondary structure we get the tertiary structure which forms the 3D functional structure of protein and in some cases from tertiary structure we get the quaternary structure also that is also the 3D functional form of a protein. It differs from the tertiary structure in a sense that it is the assembly of multiple tertiary structures. So these are the steps these are the stages through which the protein folding mechanism occurs from primary to secondary to tertiary and sometimes protein folding goes through the quaternary structure also to get a complex form of a protein but most of the cases the protein stabilizes at tertiary structure. Now let's see the mechanism of protein folding in detail. In the primary structure of protein we have a linear sequence of amino acids which is having a polar side chains shown in the red color and non-polar side chains shown in the green color. Keep this thing in mind that polar side chains form bonds with water molecules so they are somewhat hydrophilic in nature while as the non-polar side chains are hydrophobic in nature always. The information how the protein is going to be folded what will be its final conformation is all in the amino acid sequences. From the primary structure we get the secondary structure and this comes from hydrogen bonding interactions so here we see intramolecular hydrogen bonding forms the secondary structure. The secondary structure of protein is in the form of alpha helices and beta sheets. The secondary structure of alpha helix and beta pleated sheets come from hydrogen bonding between the partially negative oxygen on the carbonyl and the partially positive hydrogen on the nitrogen atom. In the folding pattern the linear amino acids transforms into right hand spiral conformation that is the helix conformation. The amino acids in alpha helix 
or arranged in a right-handed helical structure in which the helix has 3.6 residues per turn. Or the linear sequence of amino acids transforms into sheet-like structure called the beta sheets as you can see in this diagram. Unlike the alpha helix, the beta sheets form the extensive intramolecular hydrogen bonding. But these structures are also not well stabilized structures of protein because both alpha helices as well as beta sheets are amphipathic in nature. That means these structures contain both hydrophobic as well as hydrophilic structures. So it's this hydrophobic instability with which the secondary structure is transformed into tertiary structure. Through a process called hydrophobic effect or hydrophobic collapse, we get the tertiary structure. And in this stabilized structure, the folding occurs in a way that hydrophilic sites are facing the aqueous environment surrounding the protein and the hydrophobic sites are facing the hydrophobic core of the protein that's inside of the protein. We see in this structure, the polar side chains are outside as they are hydrophilic in nature, while as the hydrophobic core region is in the center, which is formed of non-polar side chains. So this is now the final confirmation of the protein through protein folding. And this final confirmation is the native protein. And this is three-dimensional functional protein. Sometimes the tertiary structure transforms into quaternary structure in some proteins, which usually involve the assembly or coassembly of subunits that have already folded. Or we can say a multiple polypeptide chains interact with each other to form a fully functional quaternary protein. In protein folding mechanism, there are sometimes an assistance needed for protein to be folded correctly. And this assistance is provided by a group of proteins called chaperones. These proteins keep the protein on right path. If the proteins deviate from the folding pattern, they send back the protein to the right folding pattern. Here we see in the protein folding, the protein folds via molten globule state, a transition state of folding. Then finally we get the correctly folded protein. But sometimes the molten globule aggregates, deviates from the folding pattern. And here comes the chaperone which catalyzes the protein back to the correct pathway. But if the chaperones fail to do so, proteases launch the attack on the protein to get away with that protein. And the amazing thing is that when the protein transforms into prions, they become protease resistant and can give rise to a multiple disease like Kuru, Scrappy disease and also the Alzheimer's disease. If you want to see the complete video on what the prions are, how they are formed, you can click on the above link. So this is all about protein folding mechanism. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.